program to an interface and not to an implementation. That's a design pattern that's usually attributed to Eric Gamma, one of the co-authors of the original design patterns book. This is a really useful design principle. Let's try and figure out what exactly it means. My favorite example of an interface is a plug point, also known as a wall socket. The great thing about these and why they are exactly like programming interfaces is that all you really care about is the shape of the pins that you need in order to fit a device into a plug point. You don't really care about the rest of the electrical wiring at all. And that's what this design principle is trying to get across. It's saying that you should write your code such that it effectively offers neat plug point like sockets, not messy wiring like you see on screen now. And the flip side of offering up nice interfaces from code you write is that you only should plug into other people's interfaces and not rely on the guts or the implementation of how their code works. Think of the interface as the surface that a unit of code, logical unit of code, offers to the outside world. That logical unit could be a single class, but it could even be a collection of classes or even a framework. The implementation is the guts of that logical unit. Never make any assumptions about the guts of any logical unit ever. Restrict yourself entirely to the interface, i.e. to the surface that that logical unit offers up. And the flip side of this is, when you are creating logical units of code, be they classes or groups of classes or entire frameworks, make sure that the interface that you set up, the interface that your classes or your frameworks provide, is easy to use, logical and consistent. These are the two flip sides of this principle. Don't make assumptions about the guts of other people's code and make the surface, the interface of your code clean, neat and easy to use. Why is this a great design principle? Because if you follow it, you're forced to write loosely coupled code where implementation can be changed without the interface changing. In other words, it's possible for someone to change the guts, keep the surface or the interface the same, and have client code, that is other folks who use that person's code, not suffer any ill effects at all. This is an extraordinarily common use case in real life. Code is changing all the time. It's impossible for the guts of any significant piece of code to stay the same for perpetuity. So it's important also that folks using that logical unit do not rely on that implementation staying the same. And that's why this design principle is a classic. Let's take an almost trivially simple example of how we might either violate or follow this design principle. Consider this line of code where our interface, i.e. the function signature of this method, returns an array list. This code violates our design principle. Instead of array list, it should just say list. That's because array list is a specific implementation of the interface list. Never make any assumptions about the guts of any code ever. That's the moral of the story. This idea of separating the interface and the implementation is a recurring theme across a number of design patterns, most notably in the decorator, iterator, and adapter design. 